Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Williams. I'm the manager of MCAT Preparation Products. And I'm going to talk to you about the resources that the WMC offers to help you prepare for the MCAT exam. And before we begin, I want to point out that you can submit a question anytime using the Q&A box. I know there's a, both a chat and a Q&A box, um, but I think, we, I think we wanted to try and use the Q&A so that we can kind of keep track of the questions that are coming in. And we'd like to start with a poll. So I think I can launch said poll. Give me a second. Okay, so the question we have for you is, what is your primary concern when preparing for the MCAT exam? So take a few minutes, take like 30 seconds, and, and then we'll end the poll. Okay, responses are starting to slow down. It looks like the most responses are for balancing my time, sticking to my study plan. And yeah, we get that a lot and followed by the amount of concepts and skills to be learned. Uh, and I wanna assure you that we do cover all of these topics throughout the presentation. Oh, actually I didn't share results with you. I'm sorry. Now you can see the results. First, <laughs> In the lead is balancing your time and sticking to your study plan. Okay, I'm going to give you an overview of preparing for the MCAT exam and then get into the details of where to find the resources offered by the WMC. And then we'll share some information on our fee assistance program and then end the hour with some Q&A. I'm going to walk through how you might strategically prepare for the exam. All of the resources we'll explore today can be accessed in the MCAT official prep hub, which you can log into with your AAMC credentials from the website. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Then within the hub, there is a free tool that walks you through how to create your own study plan. I'll also be giving you an overview of those same steps today, but the online tool is where you'll find the checklist of tasks and the downloadable templates that guide you through creating your own personalized study plan. First, in order to sign into the MCAT Official Prep Hub, you'll need your one WMC ID if you don't already have one. Many AAMC services require this username and password in order to register for the MCAT exam, access the MCAT Official Prep Hub, of course, and submit your application through AMCAS and so on. And so the WMC requires each user to have only one account. This is really important. So please double, double check to see if you already have one before potentially creating a duplicate. And having more than one account, it might prevent you from accessing certain applications or linking your prior activity to current activity. So always be sure to check to make sure if you have one before applying for your WMC ID. And here is where you would log into the MCAT official prep hub. You can find it at amc.org forward slash MCAT prep. And it's going to be that first blue button in the upper right side of the page. And this is what it might look like when you log into the prep hub. This is where you access any of your products that you may have, such as question packs or practice exams. And then all of our free resources are also accessible through the free resources tab in that navigation menu. This is also where you find the study plan guide that I just mentioned. That's at the bottom of the left-hand navigation menu. And this is what the study plan might look like. Uh, when you launch it within the MCAT Prep Hub, you can see that it allows you to track your progress as you move through the tasks of gathering information about, your, about the exam, figuring out how much you already know, creating your strategy and schedule for preparing for the MCAT, and then finally your, your actual weekly schedule. If you prefer, there is also a PDF version of the study plan guide that you can print out. And both of these include the worksheet templates for your personalized plan. 
Here's a high level look of how the templates you complete come together to create your personalized study plan. You end up with a weekly schedule that considers your personal obligations like school, work, quality time with your family. And then it lists the area as areas of study to target as well as the resources and strategies to employ for studying on those days. And this example also includes a day off and time to catch up on the previous day's work. Be sure to give yourself uh, some time to look forward to and rest and also practice some self-care. The first step to preparing for the MCAT exam is to gather some basic information about the exam. These tasks include meeting with an advisor, reviewing testimonials by other examinees, understanding your own timeline, and reviewing the official guide to the MCAT exam or information on our website. We always encourage you to work with an advisor throughout the process of preparing for the MCAT and applying for medical school. For those who don't have an advisor, the National Association of Advisors for the Health Professions has members who volunteer to be advisors for individuals with no access to their own. Advisors not only help you through the entire application process, but they can also help facilitate mock MCAT exams. You can submit a request to be partnered with an advisor on, our web, on their website, but I want to emphasize that they are volunteers. So please be patient if you don't hear back from them right away. Your peers are a great source of information. So we've interviewed some examinees who have overcome obstacles of their, in their own MCAT preparation. If you read through their study methods and tips in their profiles, you might find some of their experiences relatable. And we've also updated some of their profiles to describe where they're at in their own medical education. When is the right time to take the MCAT exam? The answer to that is when you are confident that you will be ready. We have downloadable calendars for the testing year on our website, along with the score release dates. But here are a few questions to think about to help you determine when you might be ready. First, when do you want to apply to medical school? Many examinees take their MCAT exam in the same year that they are also applying to medical school. For example, if you want to go to med school in 2023, consider taking the exam in 2022. Second, do you feel comfortable with the content? The MCAT exam doesn't have any required course you need to take before registering, but if you feel you need more time to prepare based on what is tested on the exam, consider a date later in the testing year. And I wanna make several important points about the timing of your exam and why it's critical that you take the exam when you feel ready. One is that there are a limited number of times that you can take the exam. In a single testing year, you can take it three times. Over two consecutive testing years, you can only take it four times. And in a lifetime, you are permitted to take the exam a maximum of seven times. And my second point is that medical schools do receive all exam scores, not just your most recent or your chosen score. If you choose to void your exam or you don't show up on test day, medical schools don't see a record of those exams, but voids and no-shows do count toward your testing limits over the course of the testing year and your lifetime limits. There are a few more questions we're often asked in regards to the timing of your MCAT exam. The most frequently asked question is, can I submit my application before my score is released? And the answer to that is yes. In this scenario, it's important to just indicate in your application when you took the MCAT exam, and the medical schools know to expect that your score will be populated in your application once it's available. And then the next question we often get is, where are the latest admin dates medical schools will accept, or what are those dates? Of course, that answer depends on the school. So we have those dates listed for each school in a PDF among the medical school admissions requirements or MSAR reports at aamc.org forward slash MSAR reports. Finally, a good resource for gathering information about the MCAT exam is to read the official guide to the MCAT exam. Now, a lot of the information in this book can be found for free in some of the resources we've already covered today, in addition to our website. 
the information on how the exam is scored, for example, is on our site and it's in the MCAT Essentials PDF. However, however, many students still find it useful to have all that information packaged in a printed book. So this book is available at the WMC store and it's also sold as a part of the complete bundle with, along with online access to the questions that appear at the back of the book. Once you've gathered some basic information about the MCAT exam, it's time to get familiar with the actual content and look and feel of the exam. And the WMC has several free resources to help you do that. Your first resource will be the What's on the MCAT Exam content outline. The descriptions of each section of the MCAT exam, as well as the foundational concepts, content categories, skills, and disciplines that are all assessed are all described on their own page. Some of the pages among the content outline even have sample questions. But if you don't want to navigate among all the pages that compose the content outline, we have a PDF of all of the content to download. And here's a tip. We've heard from some advisors that they have recommended their students keep a copy of the PDF alongside their studying throughout the semester or semesters before taking the MCAT exam. And sort of like keep check on the content and skills that they've covered. Learn about the features of the MCAT exam, including optional keyboard shortcuts and the highlighting and the strike through tools and practice with 12 sample questions in the practice with the exam features tool, also through the MCAT official prep hub, or you can dive right in and you can take the free full length sample test to get an idea of the look and feel of the exam's features and functions. Once you're familiar with the MCAT content and its look and feel, you might identify and start to gather all of the resources that will help you study and practice for the exam. I can speak to the AAMC MCAT official prep free and low cost resources, but there are of course lots of other resources for you to inventory, such as your class notes and textbooks, some online content review videos and study groups that you may study with. All of our online practice products, such as the question banks, the full-length practice exams, section bank, and flashcards are sold as a part of our online-only bundle, but this is also included in our fee assistance program benefits, which you may qualify for. So I'll talk a little bit more about the fee assistance program in a moment. We have these two different types of roadmaps, which are these free downloadable PDFs found on our site and in the MCAT Prep Hub. The first maps content assessed on the MCAT to common textbooks. So if you have yet to take courses in biochemistry or introductory psychology and sociology, but you wanna start studying the MCAT content from those subjects, we have these textbook roadmaps that tell you where to find the concepts assessed on the MCAT among common textbooks in these subjects. And then we've got the second type of roadmap, which maps the skills assessed in the critical analysis and reasoning skills section of the MCAT exam to specific questions in the Khan Academy MCAT collection. Speaking of the Khan Academy, it's probably the most popular free resource for studying MCAT content. There are over 1,100 videos and 3,000 practice questions that span all four sections of, sections of the MCAT exam. And so this collection was created and hosted by Khan Academy with the funding and support from the WMC and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Practice products are really our bread and butter. They fall into two types of categories. We have full-length practice exams, and then we have the question sets. We currently have five full-length practice, practice exams, but one of them is unique. The sample test is available for free, and you can access it by logging into the MCAT Official Prep Hub. And like all of the full-length exams, it will mimic the look and feel and the functionality of the actual MCAT exam. However, the sample test does not generate a scaled score or a percentile rank but you can still see a score report that breaks down like your correct or incorrect answers across the uh, skills and content categories assessed. So you might consider starting with the sample test first just to see where your gaps are among the concepts, skills, and content. 
These are examples of some question sets. Among the question sets, we have subject-specific question packs. We have the section bank, some smaller question sets like the online questions from the official guide to the MCAT exam and then our flashcards. And most recently, we launched a new product called the CARS Diagnostic Tool. And here's a sneak peek at the CARS Diagnostic Tool and, and what it looks like. If you struggle with the critical analysis and reasoning skills section of the MCAT exam, the CARS Diagnostic Tool is a good place to start because it is a unique product in that it walks you through each of the skills that are assessed. It provides a video read aloud for a few passage sets by a cognitive scientist. And then it helps you identify your strengths and weaknesses among the skills, and then leaves you with some strategies that might help you improve those skills. Once you've gathered all of your resources for studying, consider a study and practice cycle which is the idea that preparing for taking and reviewing feedback or errors from questions or tests leads to learning. And I know this is really hard to read. It's a lot of information on one slide, but here is what the cycle might look like. First, you might start by reviewing some of the topics listed on the What's on the MCAT exam content outline or by reviewing content in your class notes or maybe even the Khan Academy MCAT collection. Then you complete some practice questions, which should give you an idea of where your strengths and weaknesses are. Then you learn from your errors by explaining why choices are correct or incorrect. You review those concepts, summarize that content, and then attempt answering questions aligned to those topics again to see if you've improved. The idea then is that you repeat this process until you've honed in on what you do or do not know. And slowly fill in those gaps in your knowledge and skills. And once you feel ready to take the MCAT exam, there are some things that you might consider. You can recreate exam conditions with a full length practice exam. And when there aren't social distancing or isolation guidelines due to a pandemic, we often suggest working with an advisor to create a mock exam environment. And we have uh, resources on our website that serve as checklists for those mock exams. You'll wanna make sure you have your travel to the test center plan so that you're not rushed on test day. And of course, please read the MCAT essentials for all of our information on what to expect for test day, as well as our 10 tips for exam day. And then remember to take care of yourself throughout this process by eating well, resting, and remembering to take a break. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about the AAMC fee assistance, fee assistance program, which can greatly reduce the fees related to taking and preparing for the MCAT and your medical school applications. The benefits of the fee assistance program include reduced MCAT registration fees, access to the medical school admissions requirements database or MSAR, waivers for up to 20 medical school designations through AMCAS, and of course, the AMCAT Official Prep Online Only Bundle, which includes all of our online products, question banks, CARS diagnostic tool, full length exams. You can be awarded the fee assistance program award multiple times, but the AMCAT prep benefits are a once in a lifetime benefit. So once you receive, elect to receive the MCAT prep benefits, they will expire um, at the same time as your fee assistance program award. The fee assistance program expanded the eligibility requirements for 2022. You are eligible for the fee assistance program if you have a permanent US address. And the award approval is tied directly to the US Department of Health and Human Services poverty level guidelines. And unlike some federally funded aid programs, the fee assistance program requires your parents' financial information if you're under the age of 26 at the time of your application submission. So for more information on the eligibility requirements, make sure you go to aamc.org forward slash FAP.